She had an OnlyFans account which earned $240 million in 2021. She deactivated it, $240 million of 2000. She deactivated it, her account, basically saying that 240 is no longer a part of my life. She removed her goat-headed demon tattoo that was famous. She said, I'm not gonna live by sight anymore. I'm gonna yes. live by faith. Yes. She went on and had uh, a lot of the filters put in her body dissolved. She said her insecurities caused her to want to look as fake as possible. And this is what she said. She said, I just want to step into the real me and I want to own it. She said, I'm saying goodbye to OnlyFans and hello to self-worth. Amen. Why, there is a resurrected spirit that's alive three days after the resurrection that is alive today. The resurrected life. Crazy things start to happen when you live a resurrected life. You start dreaming again. You start no. throwing away yeah. what you thought was the security of what you've always wanted. You start finding self-worth. Mm. You become identified with the Savior that created you, love you, yeah. and places a secure mission in your heart. The resurrection power of Jesus Christ visited a man by the name of Peter who had a lot of issues with pride and even race and nationalism in his own life. But when, the Holy Spirit, when, when Jesus visited him, he went out in the book of Acts, and the Bible says of the Apostle Peter that, that he began to, to, to love the Gentiles. He began to serve them. He began to reach out to them. God was doing things in his life. The Bible said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Young men will dream dreams. Jesus liberated people like no one ever, uh, has ever done before. Yeah. He released women in the ministry. People always say, Mother Mary, and they think that's the end of Mary's life. That Mary was the mother of Jesus, and, and that was her, her one great fulfillment. That's true, but did you know in the book of Acts, when the Bible talked about the apostles' doctrine of those who are breaking bread, and they were sharing the gospel all over the world, did you know that Mary was a part of the disciples in, in that scripture, in Acts chapter 14, that to Acts chapter 1 verse 14, she was a part of the New Testament church, and planting churches, and seeing the gospel go forward? The resurrected life, Jesus said, we're done with all these these are the last days. I'm pouring out my spirit upon men, women, young and old, and everything starts to change. Now suddenly women are playing an active role in spreading the word. Peter's being challenged about, about um, his lack of love for others that are looked different than him, act different than them. Jesus speaking of what a post-resurrection life would look like. Even prophesying to this day where he said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And that's what a resurrected life does. It causes NFL players, after losing the Super Bowl, to go to the center of the field and to kneel with the winning team, the losing team, not running to the locker room, but going to the center of the field and kneeling and praying and taking off their helmet and worshiping God. Why? Because they realize they're living their life for a different meaning. The resurrected life is always bigger than it all. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and you might have it more abundance. Amen. Everything began to change when the stone was rolled away. Attitudes change. Intentions of the heart change. Priorities change. Vocabulary change. Everything changed. It wasn't a work of the flesh. It was a work of the Spirit of God. The resurrection power. A resurrected life. And you know what's awesome about it? It's because on Friday, they weren't living a resurrected life. They were living a doubtful, defeated, diminished, lack of vision of what Jesus was trying to say to them type of life. But a couple of days later, when God's power is so great, when the visitation of, of his love and that revelation gets in you, it is so powerful that what it does, it, it does a suddenly type of work in your life. The resurrected life. Life doesn't start at your failure. Life begins when you realize that the resurrected Savior lives in you. Yeah. Never judge a person by, by what they've done wrong in the past. But look at them as people who have yet experienced that, that resurrected life and that resurrected power. 
I see it happening all the time. People say all the time, they say, Pastor, um, with all the people in, 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 alcohol, in drug and alcohol rehab that live in your building, you guys must have a, a lot of fights and a lot of uh, things going on every single day. It must be like, like a war every single day. I said, no, actually, they're actually better than our church kids that come to serve here for a week. <laughs> Way more spiritual. Guys that come from South Central gang members, we got East LA gang members, we got like uh, we got white supremacist gangs, like guys that come from there. And suddenly, what happens is the world can't understand because the world says uh, you can't get people like that together and they all get along. But you know why they get along? You know why they become best friends? Because it's the power of the resurrection. They get a you want them to be, but until they got a taste of what it means to see through the eyes of Jesus, it will never happen. Come on. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundant. Yes. Everything suddenly began to change when the stone was rolled away. Attitudes changed. Intentions of the heart changed. Vocabulary changed. It wasn't a work of the flesh. It was a work of the Spirit. We need a resurrected life. Everything changed for them, and everything can change for you. If you realize today that I am a child of God, I am a resurrected one, the resurrected one lives in me, and I inherited a resurrected life, and I receive that today. Life doesn't start at your failure. Life begins when you receive the resurrected revelation. That's why... Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He's simply saying, if they knew what they were doing, they would not be doing this. Father, forgive them for what they've done without receiving uh, proper knowledge of who I really am. Jesus is pleading to the Father for our lack of revelation. Mm. They're killing me on this cross, but they really knew what it was all about. They would be doing it. Everything in your life, everything to your past that you've done in your past is not something that you should regret for the rest of your life. Everything that you have done, everything that you've been a part of is simply now come to this moment where God said, I'm getting ready to turn the darkness of Friday, that place where you felt there was no hope, that place where Jesus was taking the march and everyone thought it was over. Nothing would appear as though they thought it would appear. But a couple days later, it all changed. And not only were their hopes restored, their expectations of life became so incredible that all of a sudden, everything began to change about the way they lived their life. There's something about hope. You can tell a person all day long uh, about what they've done wrong and the failures of their life. But until a person gets a revelation of hope, they will never, ever cross the line and turn in that direction. We need in America today a revelation of hope. Amen? Amen. When you give your death to God, he gives you a resurrected life. You give your death to this world. You know what they'll do? They'll put your, their foot on your head and they'll just keep driving you deeper into the ground. They don't want your death. They don't want your worst moments. We serve a God that wants you at your worst because that's when he's at his best. And this Easter season, allow it to turn around and begin your life by receiving more than the, the beautiful story of what Jesus has done for us. And Lord, this is my story. I am a resurrected life. And as I said Friday night, we always say, well, man, look at Jesus. Jesus won the victory. No, no, you won the victory. Jesus overcame death. No, you overcame death. Because everything that he did on that cross, he did that for you. You won. You rose with him. Identified with Christ. The resurrected life. Friday, they're walking around. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. He's not what he thought. It's over. Let's, let's, let's just go hide. The world is terrified. Now they're really going to come and get us because all these promises were made and, and let's run for the hills. And that tomb was empty. Come on. People started running around telling everybody there's something about when hope begins to stir up in your life again that creates a momentum that begins unstoppable. But yeah. this was more than just an unstoppable momentum. This was a supernatural momentum. Something was beginning to happen. And God began to bring people into this place where they thought it was over only to realize 
that the ending of their life became the brand new beginning of a life they never Amen. knew that they could have. Amen. Just when you think it's over, watch the love of God visit you in such a powerful way and turn your life around to where you say, my life isn't over, it's actually has started right now at the point of receiving this resurrected life. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me. You see, we, we, have, we carry this place of resurrection, this spirit in our life. And until we start walking around and, and living in this awareness that we have, that we are a, res a resurrected Savior, a resurrected life lives in us, we can literally start changing the world. Yeah. On Friday, it was death. And on Sunday, the report came out about what Jesus had done. And they stopped living life with the expectations of man. They started living under a new revelation that changed everything about society, that changed the way people serve, that changed the prejudices of a generation. All of that began to change. Everything began to change because they got a glimpse of the greatest revelation of all, yes. a resurrected Savior Amen. that gave them a resurrected life. Every head bowed, every eye closed, all over this room today. And everywhere that I look, God is changing lives. Everywhere that I go, the impossible is happening. Everywhere that I turn, it seems that nowadays that People are realizing that when they've come to the end of everything they thought they've ever wanted, they have realized it was nothing that they ever wanted. Until they understand that when you live your life for an audience of one, you'll never be backstabbed, you'll never be hurt, you'll never be wounded, you'll never be abused, you'll never be sold, as we heard in the story today, and in this life as a teenage girl, all that. But when, when, when an audience of one grips your heart and you find who you are in Christ. It's the most powerful revelation. And all over this room this morning, I'm going to count to three. And if you'll say today, Pastor, I'm ready to live for Jesus. I, I trade in the death of my sin, the death of my past, the death of things that I thought brought me life and my intentions. I was seeking it, but it never brought me joy. And I, I trade in. I'm not saying you're going to be perfect, but you are trading in the things that you thought would bring you life. And you, you bring them to the cross of Christ. And you replace death for his resurrected life. If you're ready today to lay down the things that you pursue that thought would bring you the greatest joy. Well, I'm not saying that you can't enjoy the things you're pursuing. Because the truth is you'll enjoy them more now. Because win, lose, or fail in the pursuits of your business, job, whatever you're doing. It doesn't matter because God is orchestrating as you're living for him the events. And you just sit back and... You just rest in the fact that you do the best you can, but God is, is ultimately on the move. I'm saying dream and go forward, but you'll just have this foundation of security that comes from God that allows you to make decisions and say, I don't need this stuff I thought. I don't need the $240 million a year. I, I, I get deactivated in a heartbeat because I know mm -hmm. my joy is found in the resurrected life. Everyone today who's ready to trade in death for life to know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. I want you to raise your hands when I say three. I believe hands are going to go up all over this room. One, get ready. Two, the Holy Spirit's moving. If that's you, when I say three, I want you to raise your hands across this room, all over this room. One, two, three. Lift them up. They're going up. Oh, my goodness. Everywhere, hands are going up. Can I tell you, I have a lot of faith to believe for altar calls, but sometimes God will do something that just kind of blows your mind. And I think today people are just ready to be resurrected. They're ready for God's power. They're ready to say, Lord, it's not I that live, but Christ in me. Hands are going up everywhere. Praise yeah. God. Balcony. Too many. I'm not going to count. Too many. Because God is moving. It's time for you to be that Sunday regenerated person. It's time for you to be that, that, that person that, that runs and jumps like Peter and the disciples and ready for life. Enthusiastic. Has good news to tell everyone the what God has done in you. Everywhere hands are going up. Well, I believe the anointing's here. I believe God's doing something in people's lives. I believe right now people are being set free. They just receive that spirit. Everyone that's raising your hands, repeat these words after me. And everyone together, thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross. But I will be saved. I repent of my sin. 
and I give you my life. You died for me. I live for you. Resurrect me from death to life, from the ashes of defeat. Today is my day where I start running and jumping again. And I start living under the expectation of heaven. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, for the final two minutes, I want you to stand your feet. I want every one of you that's ready to be resurrected and have that resurrected power in life. I want you just to sing this as loud as you can. Are you ready? Come on, worship God together. Sing this in closing one last time. Come on.